Hey everybody, Bob Ostrom here from BobTeachesArt.com and today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite new tools in Illustrator, the Puppet Warp Tool. Now if you're unfamiliar with the Puppet Warp Tool, you are really going to love this thing. What it basically does is it allows you to change the shape of your artwork on the fly. And that's a big deal when you're working with a program like Illustrator because as you know, creating things in Illustrator sometimes can be a little tedious, especially if you want to make changes as you're going through. Now don't get me wrong, Illustrator is a great tool for being able to uh, reshape things and redraw things and edit things, much more so than Photoshop is, but sometimes time is of the essence and we don't want to be sitting here all day when it comes to reshaping things so we have the warp tool and the puppet warp tool is similar to that but what it actually does is allows us to have even more control over the things that we change so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to give you a quick demonstration then i'm going to show you how it works in a real live situation uh, a logo that i did for a client about a week ago or so and i was working on it and i thought wow this could really look better if i put a little bend in this thing and so I'll show you how that works. But first, let's take a look at the basics of the Puppet Warp Tool. Now here you'll see that I have a piece of artwork. It's actually two separate pieces, the text and the background square here. What I've done is I've grouped these ahead of time so that they'll stay together as I start to move things around. So to work with the Puppet Warp Tool, what I wanna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and just select this whole thing. And you can see the Puppet Warp Tool is right over here. It looks like a little thumbtack. And the reason for that is because the thumbtack is actually plays a big part in this. What we want to do is I'm going to put a bend in the middle of this thing, but I want to tack down the two ends so that they kind of stay you know, sort of relatively in position. We're not going to move those around too much. So I'm going to place a pin right here next to this letter P because I want that to stay sort of in the place that it is right now. You'll see that when I click on it, up comes the little Puppet Warp grid. Don't worry about that. <laughs> it's not going to cause any problems. It's just going to kind of give you an idea how things look when they start to bend. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and place a pin at the letter T here because that's where I want the bend to be. You can see that that T is highlighted. That means when I click it again and start to drag it, it's going to move these two little solid pins right here. They're going to hold their position. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. So if I go ahead and I start to drag this up, you'll notice that the whole thing starts to bend. And I can move it to the left or the right, or I can actually move it down. I can pretty much move it however I want to move it. And with these two pins in position, they're holding their place. Let's say that I wanted to make another change. All I need to do is click on one of these pins, and then I can start to drag that one as well. All right, you can see this allows me to have a great deal of flexibility. If I want even more motion in it, I could put another pin here. Anytime I put a pin in, those other pins are gonna hold their position and I'll just go ahead and drag that. So you can see we can get pretty crazy with this thing. And as you look at this little grid back here behind it, you can see that kind of gives us an idea of where those bends are happening. Well, this is completely useless. So let's, <laughs> let's kind of just go back to where we were. We're gonna just drag that centerpiece up like that. So there you have it. That is the basics of how it works. Let's say that you happen to be working on a logo, which I am, and here is a, <laughs> this is a fact simply of the logo that I was working on for a client. It didn't actually say logo, it actually said his name in there. Basically what was going on was I had created this sort of swoosh coming out of that, out of that ball there, and I wanted to put a little arc in it. I didn't really think it looked quite the way that I wanted it to look. So I was gonna kind of bend it in the middle. And to do that, I'm going to use the exact same method that I used to bend that thing on the top, but I'm gonna do it just a little bit differently. I've separated the artwork here. I've got the swish on a background layer, and I've got the logo type on a foreground layer. So I'm gonna lock down that foreground layer real quick. Gonna make a quick selection here. I'm gonna enter isolation mode because isolation mode is gonna let me see things a little bit better. So if you're unfamiliar with isolation mode, it's real simple. You just click on your selection three times and there you have it in isolation mode. Before I start to bend this, I wanna make sure that I group everything because if I don't group everything, these little floating bits here, you see these? If I don't group everything, those won't move along with the puppet warp. So I'm gonna select all this one more time. Just hit uh, Control G or Command G, depending on if you're a PC or Mac. There we go. And so now what I need to do is I need to place my push pins in there to hold the position of the back end and the front end, and then put a pin in the middle to build a little arc in there. So let's pop one in right there. 
Go way out to the end here. We'll pop a pin in there. And now I want to use the uh, center here as sort of my bend. So I'm going to place a pin right here. And I'm going to go ahead and push up on that. Now this looks pretty good, but maybe I want to pull this down just a hair. Okay. And the nice thing about working with the Puppet Warp tool is I'm not confined to just working with three pins. I can put as many pins in here as I want to. Let's say that I wanted to push this arc up a little bit here. Or maybe I wanted to, I don't know, maybe I wanted to expand it out here. I could take this and kind of pull that out a little bit, make it thicker here. Uh, maybe I put the bend in here. I don't know, then things start getting all crazy. And now I have something that I didn't want at all. The nice part about this is you don't have to be confined to those pins that you've put in there. Once you put them in, you can actually take and delete those. So let's say that I didn't really like the way that this was. Oh, it's too thick here. So I can take this pin right here, highlight it, and I can just push delete. That'll take that pin out of there. Same thing down here. Okay, I don't really love this. Okay, I like that arc pretty well. That, that I think that works okay. So I'm going to go ahead and commit to that. I'll just say... Uh, deselect all and let's hop back into normal mode here so I'm going to press my escape to get out of isolation mode and you can see there I've got that arc if I was working on this for real I'd probably want to reposition this just a little bit maybe swinging that arc down just a hair like that nudge it into position There you go, something like that. I think that looks pretty good. So there you have it. That is the basics of the Puppet Warp tool. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did and you'd like to see more like this, come join me over at bobteachesart.com. I'll see you again real soon.